Beauregard is a web developer at the United States Department of at the United States, U.S. Department of State, let's just say that, uh, and founder of Drupal for Gov, an open source community of government employees interested in making government more open to open source. Uh, her work with Drupal for Gov has allowed her to work with fellow developers to create iPhone and Android apps using an XML feed from the Drupal Government Day website. I think it's super interesting that you've been able to do that. There's a lot of hackathons and types of events that take place and you don't see uh, anything that comes out of them. So the fact that you've been able to do that and implement some things is really quite incredible. So looking forward to hearing more from what you've been able to do. Welcome. So I've never done this presentation without having it in front of me, so this is going to be fun. Um, also, the last time I did this, it took me 18 minutes, and I know I stand between you and a break. So <laughs> I'm timing myself at 16. We're going to run through this and find me if you have any questions. All right. So my talk is really about failure. <laughs> uh, we fail a lot in U.S. government. Um, but exactly who the hell am I? My name is Kirsten. Uh, I have a funny ethnic name. My family is originally from Finland. I got the name. So I am a mom. I am also a developer at the Department of State. And I will also point out this is a brand new dress because I wear tennis shoes and sneakers and t-shirts and jeans. And um, it, <laughs> thank you. And, and it is the butt crack of dawn to me right now. Um, <laughs> I don't roll into the office until 10.30. Um, I can also point out that if you've ever been to a Drupal presentation, there's going to be a cat. So we're just going to just start it off. There's my cats. That's Hermione and that's Ron and they are brother and sister. You can also find me at any one of these places. I will not give you my personal Twitter account because uh, I'm a little weird. Um, but you can always find me at GovDrupal. We tweet a lot for um, anything related to our events. If you want to find me on GitHub or Drupal.org, you just look for me under Bendy Girl. And at the happy hour, ask me to do my little bar trick. You'll see why I'm called Bendy Girl. All right, where's the advance? Because that is not advancing. There we go. So here's what we're going to talk about. Failure, open source community organizing, and costs. And I am clearly not doing this right. All right. So who has seen these kinds of stupid slides in a presentation? You're not going to see those here. Um, all I'm really going to point out in this one is a failure we had. It's called core.gov. If you really want to look it up, you can on uh, the Wayback Machine. Core.gov happened. Yeah, uh, too long, didn't read. Core.gov happened back in 2004 to 2007, and we abandoned it in 2007. It was not even cutting edge in 2004. It was a way for us to try and collaborate and share, I'm not even going to call it code snippets. It was really a way for us to collaborate on processes. That's how bad it was. <laughs> That's OK. We failed again. We tried to do an open collaboration platform where we could share code. But it was so onerous to get into this that nobody did it. Membership was difficult to maintain, was difficult to actually open source your code. And then you had to maintain it in a system you didn't know. So this lasted for three years. Doo -doo -doo. So now I'm going to talk about some other things that we failed at. I like to move around. Can I take this off? Great. So how many of you have heard of forge.mil? This is the DOD system for sharing code. The problem with forge.mil is once you've put it on forge.mil, you can't reuse it. DOD hardens everything with what they call a stig. And if you don't have your STIG components, you can't use it. Forge.mil, failure. Guess what else we failed at? Vista. Anybody know what Vista is? Vista is the project for the Department of Veterans Affairs that came out of the Public Health Service from the 70s. 
It is created in a program called MUMPS. Anybody heard about that language? Exactly. <laughs> it is actually a success story, too, because this code is being used by the Finnish government um, to do all of their healthcare systems, as well as the Jordanian government. And you can look up World Vista and find out all you want to know about this. But what Vista gave us was Ocera. That's another failure that I'll talk about in a minute. We're going to go with sites.usa.gov. Anybody hear that one? It was a WordPress out of the box solution that none of us wanted. So none of us used it. How about fedspace.gov? This was supposed to be the open collaborative platform, kind of like a MySpace for government. This dates back to 2010 through 2012. I know the developers on this because they were trying to get me on it. And I was like, peace out. So this brings us to my next favorite one, which we'll get to at the end here, code.gov. Anybody hear about this one? Massive failure. And I'm going to show you why. OK, so this to spawned Ocera. Ocera is the open source electronic health record. I don't know what the E stands for. The reason Ocera exists is because they created a nonprofit in order to take the Vista code, share it, rebuild it, modernize it. Remember, who knows what MUMPS is? So, so that you could reuse it back into the Department of Veterans Affairs. Didn't happen. In, in the course of, the, I think, the six years that it's been around, one contributed project has been incorporated back into the project, back into Vista. And it was a security issue. Congress doesn't like us taking this stuff and putting it back into our systems because they see open source as inherently vulnerable. Okay? We fought a lot about that one. So the next one, sites. This is what it used to look like. This is from the Wayback Machine. Um, what we asked for was actually the Web Experience Toolkit, which you all did. We asked for standards-based where we could share snippets of code because we all need something different. But if we could do it in a modular way, how awesome would that be? Um, can you click on this link for me? Oh, sorry. Let me get out of the way. There you go. Come on, baby, you can load. Okay, if this doesn't load, that's where you need to go. The compliance dashboard shows you how many agencies are actually doing this. There we go. Can you scroll up a little? How much green do you see here? One? Maybe two? No, we hit three. Out of the entire US federal government, how many think that's a success? OK, back to the slides. Thing is, is it doesn't have to be this way. We can actually do better. So this is where we come into communities. This is why I love your Web Experience Toolkit. We've actually contributed back to it. Um, Drupal for Gov and Mill OSS. That's another sad story. Next slide. You guys are still doing this. As of eight days ago, you actually had a merge pull request. Woo! I love that. It means that people are actually still contributing. Maintaining these systems over time is pretty amazing, especially since you've been doing it so long. I don't have an example like this in the US federal government. I have none. 
Next one. Mill OSS is one of my, my personal favorites. I'm a member of Mill OSS because I used to work at the Department of Veterans Affairs. At VA, we did a lot of work with DOD. Mill OSS is all about incorporating open source thoughts, technology, passions behind collaborative open source development within the DOD environment. They lost their URL recently. <laughs> the problem with a lot of our projects is that we're really, really focused on one or two people who are leading a project. Next slide. That brings me to Drupal for Gov. How many of you have heard of us? Oh, that's more than I thought. So this was our very first event. This is technically the second event. Drupal Gov Days was held in Europe in 2012. This was the one we held in North America, in DC, at the Department of Commerce. We had over 300 people at our first event, and we killed the Wi-Fi in 25 minutes. It was a resounding success even after that. Next slide. So the thing that's important for us is that we've been able to um, use multiple streams for communication. We do quarterly events, so we keep everyone engaged constantly. We do a yearly conference that has, a, this year we had, I think, 980 at our event. 980 people at a government facility where 45% of the attendees are government tech developers. That's pretty awesome. And not everyone who comes to our events are Drupalers. Sometimes they come to it just for the web component parts or some for the project management stuff. Although we're Drupal for Gov, we don't limit ourselves to just be Drupal. We can't be all things to everyone, but we're going to be all things to at least my government techies. We also focus specifically on our needs, not just of our government, but our nonprofit sector. 25% of our attendees to any of our events, whether it's a webinar or our yearly conference, they're nonprofits. So we meet their needs too. Next one. The problem is, is that if Drupal for Gov is going to survive, it can't be because of me. We are going to start, my team is going to be really happy to hear this right now, we're going to start succession planning at our October meeting where we're going to start cycling me out so that I walk away from this and people can still continue to do this. Because the work still has to get done. Like with your web experience toolkit, the work is still getting done. Are the original developers still involved? Maybe, maybe not. But you've created some sort of succession plan to make it happen. Mill OSS did not do that. They no longer have a champion. He left and they lost the URL. They no longer hold events. And they have limited involvement in the entire group itself, which is really sad because there's a lot of open source stuff going on at DOD, but now they can't collaborate at all. Next slide. So here's what costs are really associated with using an open source project or open standards or any of this open stuff we're talking about. One, if you recreate that wheel, you've just created a bunch of useless stuff. You have, because you can't recreate the wheel. There's a lot of stuff out there. So learn from what everyone else has done and don't repeat it. If you repeat our mistakes, you're going to make them mistakes too. I don't want to see that happen here. Next one, fork it. There's a lot of code out there from government agencies. Why not just fork it? You can use those other repositories to build on your own momentum. And you guys are awesome at this. Web Experience Toolkit should be the thing that you are always talking about because it's amazing. Seriously, developers in DC, we love you guys for that. Also, reuse your past projects. Some of those might be outdated, probably need to be updated, but you might find some amazing code in there that just needs to be forked, updated, and then, you know what? That's kind of what gets for. Next up, OSS is not new. 
and you're also not alone. Oh, you can go back. It's okay. Um, can we play this from here? Let's see how my time is going. Nailing it. <laughs> this was um, Julian or Tease Rodriguez. He was our keynote this year from Argentina. And the reason I want you to hear him is he's going to talk hey, about strategy. Oh, he needs to start at 11 minutes and 34 seconds. Yeah. Has the, the, the mandate to work in making a more professional civil service using technology uh, and, um, of course, using the, the, all, all the, the, the public employees that work in, in government. When we arrived, we, we saw that there was basically no digital strategy at all. Uh, so we, we arrived in December 2015, and, and we, we saw that, and, and we, we knew that there were like several initiatives in different ministries, but that nothing was connected uh, between... Right? We, we saw that there was... Basically, it's better as a video. Strategy at all. Uh, so we, we arrived in December 2015 and, and we, we saw that and, and we, we knew that there were like separate initiatives in different ministries, but nothing was connected uh, between different things, uh, between ministries and, and, and the platforms were very sparse and with totally different uh, experiences for the citizens. So we started to think about what a strategy should look like. And we started with some principles. OK, how, how should we serve citizens? And we know we have to focus on the citizen, which is something that, that we already know here, and, 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 and most governments already know right now. But in December 2015 in Argentina, this was not the case. And that we have to push this agenda. We are one government. People don't need, or, or, or we don't have to expect them to know every ministry, every department, every agency of government, so they can interact and, 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 and get a service from us as government. So we should have to act like that. We go to the citizen. This is a, a, a totally different approach than, than what we had before. And, and uh, afterwards, I'm going to explain what I mean by this. Um, also, uh, an important one is we measure and improve. We, we don't have to get it right the first time. We, we have to have the humility, we have, we have to be humble enough to, to say, okay, we don't, know, we don't have all the answers. We know we, we have to do better than what we have right now. And maybe sometime in the future we, we're gonna have to change, but uh, uh, that's the idea. It's a constant improvement over time. Uh, with the humility of saying, okay, we know we're not perfect all the time. And, and okay, we can stop. Government is, is very hard to do. Uh, government always wants, wants to say, we are perfect, we're doing everything right. So, Does anyone disagree with anything he has just said? What was really great about listening to him is he states up front in and I highly recommend just actually going to our YouTube page and, and actually watching this. As he talks about the fact that there is a lot of poverty in Argentina. And he is literally taking his development team and actually going out and meeting and staying with people who are um, in dire straits or in rural areas. And they're seeing how they're actually like, um, using their mobile phones. Because one of the things that they learned was everything is mobile. People in rural areas may not have access to the web, but they have it on their phones. So how do they provide their citizen services in that way? And the only way was for them to actually go out and talk to people, because the analytics only got them so far. And they learned that by doing a lot of these things, they could actually improve the overall um, feel and coordination and strategy for the entire government. And they do this all in Drupal. Yeah, I'm a Drupal developer, so sue me. Um, that brings me back to Drupal for Gov. We actually do have a yearly event, 
July 23rd to 26th, we have a full day of training. People come to our event specifically to train. These are the trainings that are offered at DrupalCon for like $400. They offer training to our attendees for free. Our entire event is free. We have, one of the things that we do as Drupal for Gov is we coordinate with small businesses and medium-sized businesses in order to provide them a platform for showing their expertise. One of the things that's really amazing about our event is we have 31 exhibit booth spaces. And out of all of them, I've never had a Google, I've never had a GitHub, we have never had the kind of money that you would normally have from those big government agency wannabe things. They don't come to our events. You will only see small and medium sized um, contractors. Sometimes you even get government agencies who will buy a booth, which is really weird. But what we do is we coordinate much better with the people who are providing us services. And our goal isn't so that you can sell us services, it's to show the expertise that you already have. And we want to put you in front of the government employees and nonprofits that you're already providing services to. And the only way to do that is to show your expertise. So if you're interested in Drupal for Gov information, let me know. If you want to talk government in general, I am a government employee, so I can do that. And uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Your phone.